Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And I want to welcome uh, to you on, on our Mother's, uh, well it's Mother's Union here on our Monday, Thursday. Um, and for those other members of the congregation that have joined us tonight, uh, you're very, very welcome as uh, we remember this special evening in the life of Jesus. We're going to begin uh, by singing the hymn 228, Meekness and Majesty. Let's stand together. Thank you. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Church's Prayer for Monday, Thursday. God our Father, you've invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his Church, proclaimed his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the 11th chapter of the first letter to the Corinthians, beginning to read at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 13th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning to read at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so. For that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. When he was gone, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot go. A new command I give to you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Thanks be to thee, O Lord. I believe, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. 
and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us on the conscious Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, take my words and speak through them. Take our thoughts and think through them. Take our hearts and set them in fire with love for you through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In my younger day, I used to enjoy watching television documentaries of various places one could go to on holiday. And I loved watching all the, the, the beautiful scenery that there was and imagined would I ever get the chance to go and visit. And in one of those programs, I, I, I want you to imagine the scene that I'm going to set before you. And the scene was about visiting the Dome of the Rock which is the Muslim shrine with a huge golden dome and dominates Jerusalem skyline. In order to visit, you must first remove your shoes as a sign of respect. And below the centre of that dome, in the actual rock on which the dome is built, is a carpeted underground room, which can only be reached by a very steep, narrow staircase. There are no windows in this room, and in the heat of summer, the temperature is stifling. But what makes the atmosphere almost unbearable is the stench of generations of sweaty feet entrenched in the carpet. Many tourists are unable to stomach more than a few moments before they're desperate for fresh air again. No wonder that foot washing was a job for the lowest household slave in the first century Palestine. Water was scarce, and with no public transport, people walked for miles and miles in hot, dusty tracks. The smell from sweaty feet must have been rough. So the first task of the host was to order the slave to the unpleasant job of washing the guest's feet. Traditionally, a meal would take place around the low table, so the guests could recline on their left elbows with their feet stretched out behind them. The foot slave would quietly move along behind the reclining guests, washing their feet virtually unnoticed. The meal itself at the Passover was a symbolic one, reminding the Jews of the sufferings of their forefathers and the power of God's deliverance. The foods that were eaten were symbols to remind the Jews of their captivity in Egypt. They would have eaten lamb. The word Pesach, or Passover, applies to the lamb of sacrifice as well as to the deliverance from Egypt and to the feast itself. Unleavened bread, known as matzo, is also called the bread of affliction because it recalls the unleavened bread was prepared for the hasty flight by night from Egypt. And three of these large mastos are broken 
and consumed during the ceremony. Then there are bitter herbs, known as moreover, and they are a reminder of the bitterness of slavery and suffering in Egypt. Green herbs to be dipped in salt water, because the salt water represents tears of sorrow which were shed during the captivity of the Lord's people. Harasheth, which is a mixture of chopped apples, nuts, cinnamon, and wine, represents the mortar used by Jews in building palaces and pyramids of Egypt during their time of slavery. And finally, wine is dipped from a common bowl. And there are four acts of drinking wine during the Cedar Fest, which is known as the Four Cups. And it's this Cedar meal that Jesus and the disciples were celebrating in the upper room that night. It was the conclusion of that meal that Jesus himself gave two of the symbols of the cedar meal fresh significance. He took a loaf and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup of wine. He drank from it and gave it to his disciples saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Familiar words? Of course. From it is born one of two sacraments of our church, the Holy Communion, which we are going to share in this evening. It seems that there was no slave in attendance at the Last Supper. So if the disciples were to enjoy their Passover meal, Someone had to undertake the slave's role. But it didn't simply occur to anyone who was there to mean himself to that extent. Imagine then their horror and their consternation when Jesus himself, their leader, quietly stood up, donned a towel, and collected a bowl of water. They were too stunned even to comment but perhaps Peter blurted on the thoughts of all of them when he declared, You shall never wash my feet. You shall never wash my feet. It was all very embarrassing. So Peter seized on Jesus' response. Unless I wash you, you have no share with me, and used it to relieve some of his uncomfortable feelings. Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Peter felt more comfortable with the idea of Jesus washing away his sin than he did with the idea of Jesus in the degrading role of a slave. We are so steeped in our separate roles within our hierarchical society that it's difficult for us to comprehend the idea of someone who is both a leader and a servant at the same time. From his reply to Peter's comment, it is clear that Jesus was well aware that Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. But that knowledge didn't prevent Jesus washing Judas' feet. And throughout that final meal, Jesus treated Judas just as he treated everyone else, with love, with respect, and with concern. It was Jesus' last meal with his friends before he died. Yet his mind wasn't on his own forthcoming ordeal, but on them and on what they still needed to learn. What he taught them was a major lesson, and he taught it in a way that they would never forget. He shocked them into some sort of awareness, although as Peter's response makes clear, they didn't fully understand the lesson. But that didn't matter. For the episode itself was etched on their memories and they had a lifetime to reflect upon it and to learn its true meaning. When he washed the disciples' feet, Jesus made the invisible people visible. Normally, no one would even notice the slave who did that work. But by his action, Jesus made sure that his disciples would become aware 
of invisible people. And you know, we still have plenty of invisible people today. People who do menial jobs, migrant workers selling a Belfast Telegraph at major sets of traffic lights, and people who live on the streets, and so on, and so on. We need to notice them, and to treat them as human beings, with love, with concern, and with respect. Not only were Jesus' friends expected to notice invisible people, but they were also expected to learn from them. By washing their feet, Jesus challenged the disciples to forget status and ego and begin to serve each other. No task was to be beneath them, and no person was too inferior or too sinful to be served in this way or to be treated with human dignity. That's a tall order. Some years ago, a young American girl visited the home of Beethoven. She sat down at the piano of the great artist and played through with pride the Moonlight Sonata. And when she had finished, she turned to the stern old caretaker of the house and asked, I suppose there have been many great people have come here. Yes, said the man. Stevie Wonder was here last week. And did he play on Beethoven's piano, she asked. No, said the old man. He said he wasn't worthy. It's one thing to be pleasant to a person in a lowly paid position, or someone trying to sell us a copy of a big issue that we don't really want. But are we really expected to learn from them? Jesus' Monday Thursday foot washing was a lesson in humility. And perhaps if we open our eyes so that our own world becomes more visible, we'll discover that we all still can benefit from a lesson in humility from time to time. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who when I was able to institute thy holy sacrament at the Last Supper, didst voice the feet of the apostles and teach us by example the grace of humility, cleanse us, we beseech thee, from all stain of sin, that we may be worthy partakers of thy holy mysteries, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Our words of offering are, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The hymn is hymn number 525. Let there be love shared among.
Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that have confessed thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that have put authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, presbyters, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, make me kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in goodness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith and love to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn unto him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also at St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus come into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John said, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them up unto the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. We need right and right so to do. It's very meet, right and our bounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, 
evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as we gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to drink the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may make them more than thy men, and he in us. Amen. Um, the prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy heavenly mercy has given thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel did command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee. Thus be on him in thy heart and faith. Give thanks to him. Amen. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. Take this in remembrance that Christ joined to shed for thee. And be thankful. Amen. Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, that was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. Take this in remembrance of Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty 
Christ a never living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us. We have truly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and thus to assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us. And that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope for thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit, we will honour and glory, worlds without end. Amen. Amen. Can I uh, remind you that you're, you're very welcome to share in uh, tea, coffee and bite tea in the, in the church hall after this service, the Mother's Union, um, I invite you to join me. And, um, and also tomorrow's service at 10.30 in the morning and then the service on Easter day at 11 o'clock. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you either or both of those services. We're going to sing now um, hymn number 517 which is Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You as we seek to follow the example of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Thank you.